This is Leaders in the Trenches, and your host today is Gene Hammett. Hi, this is Gene Hammett. I am the host of Leaders in the Trenches. My question for you today is, how do you inspire your employees to have excellence? Why would you want them to have excellence? Because excellence is exactly what you need to separate yourself from the competition, to create something that aligns people together. Now, I'm not going to go too much into this because I've got an excellent guest today, and I want you to really get the full effect of it. But I have Horst uh, Schultze. Uh, he's the co-founder of Ritz-Carlton, and he wrote this book, Excellence Wins. We talk about the reason why excellence was the, uh, the backbone of that Ritz-Carlton brand. We talk about how to engage employees and create leadership that inspires people to want to be excellent at work and treat others with excellence. So stay tuned to this full interview on Leaders in the Trenches. Hi, Horst. Hi. How are you? I'm just fine. I hope you are. I am great. Well, I'm excited to have you on the show. This is Leaders in the Trenches. I've already let our audience know a little bit about you, but I'd love for them to, to hear it from your voice. So tell us a little bit about you and your journey to where you are today. I'm sorry. Tell us a little bit about you. About me? Well, I'm, I'm a hotel, hotel guy who started as a, working as a busboy when I was 14 years old, away from home. Grew up in Europe, worked in, in Germany, Switzerland, Holland, Holland America Line, France, England. And then in 1964, came to the U.S., worked for Hilton, Hyatt, and, and uh, eventually started the Ritz-Carlton Hotel Company. And after nearly 20 years running that company, I started another company, which was called Capella Hotels, which was sold uh, nearly two years ago. I'm still uh, involved somewhat as a uh, Chairman Emeritus, you know how that is, a retired chairman, <laughs> but I'm very busy now making speeches, consulting, etc. That's who I am. Well, I appreciate you giving us that. You know, it came over my email to, to be on the show, uh, founder of Ritz Carlton. And I was like, ah, that would be an interesting conversation because the name and the brand of Ritz Carlton is known for excellence in customer service. And I'm sure that's intentional. So where did that come from? The name Rich Carlton? Just the, the, the excellence in customer service. Excellence in customer service. Well, I, I, as I said, I was uh, all my life uh, involved in customer service. I started when I was 14. And the, the first major D that I worked with, the first manager of the food and beverage operation and the hotel where I worked with, in fact, the first time he talked to me, he said, let's understand, we don't come to work here. We come, to, we come to this place to create excellence. And I was, uh, that was the, of course, I was 14 years old. It made a lot of impression, yet it was forgotten at the same time. So, but, it, but at the same time, it lived with me. Why go to work to just fulfill a function? Why not go to work to create something excellent? The same time, the same effort, not more. Just a different mindset creating excellent rather than just fulfilling a function. So the function will, will eventually become better and it is more fun and it's creative and it's fulfilling for a human being. Excellence is, it's, I think, of extreme importance for us. Otherwise, we just flow through life rather than create. Well, one of the things I like about this, I, I haven't read the whole book yet, but you wrote a book about this and you told a story about um, an aeronautic company where an employee was going to show them the ropes. Yeah. <laughs> and he, he comes in and says, I'm going to show you how to survive through each day and get through it. Yeah. Imagine that. When, uh, that's happening all around us. And, 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 but whose fault is it? It's leadership. Yeah. Leadership has created that environment where people come to work and really – just want to spend the time, want to get over the time, we can get over the eight hours and get back home because they're not connected to anything. They're working without being connected to the outcome of the work. In fact, the millennials today, that's what they say. They say, we didn't say it, but we were thinking it. And the millennials say, what's in it for me? What yeah. is the outcome here? I'm just doing something for you or are we connected together? It's kind of a sad state of our leadership in, in businesses. 
and, and, and of course, we, we invite them to come to work or, or we hire them. We're not inviting them. We, we, we hire people to fill, fulfill a certain function rather than hiring them to be part of our dreams, part of our objectives. And because, well, let's face it, 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 you and I, the chairs we're sitting in, is fulfilling a function. Yeah. Yet we're talking about human beings which we now hire to bring in to fulfill a function. And they have no connection, no emotion to it. So they, all they want is to get over those eight hours every day to get home. And then we have great expectations from them. It's kind of ridiculous, isn't it? It is, it is. And I appreciate you going into that because you, know, you created a vision, right? With this hotel called Ritz Carlton and you know, excellence being something that probably is near and dear to you. That's one reason why your book has excellence wins. Um, why did you have to write this book? Well, I, yeah, I had to, well, you know, you come to a certain age, suddenly your career and all the ego stuff's gone and you want to give something back. That was part of it. But interesting enough, uh, Stephen Covey years ago started urging me and started calling me once a year at least, have you written your book? You have to share your thinking. You are obligated to share, morally obligated. Well, yeah, yeah. And in fact, he said, I will write the foreword. And unfortunately, I didn't do it. In the meantime, uh, uh, Stephen Covey is gone on and, and uh, has passed away. And, and sadly, a great mind left us. But he pushed me and he, he told me there is a responsibility to share the meaning on what it meant to be successful. Is, there's a responsibility to give that to others. And as I went on and I, I reminded of, was reminded of that in my mind, and then I make a lot of speeches through the Speakers Bureau, to the Washington Speakers Bureau, and every time I make a speech, people come to me and say, do you have a book? And every time they remind me of Covey's urging that you have to share your knowledge when you have some. And that's why I wrote it. Well, Horst, let me ask you, let's go a little deeper in there, but why about excellence? Well, I, well because, because it is, it, excellence is something that fulfills people. Excellence is a vision that everybody should have. And we, we are, you know, even the Bible says, we, are, we, are, we perish without vision. And, and, and I see so much around me that people work, work without vision. And excellence is the connection to a vision. It's not the doing. Excellence connects it to a vision. And excellence demands from you that you have a vision. Again, otherwise you just fulfill a function today. If it's excellence, it actually leads to something. So it's higher. And it doesn't cost more. But it is fulfilling. You see, uh, 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 Aristotle, 3,000 years ago, said people will not be fulfilled unless they have purpose and belonging. And if you put that together, how do you, how do you, have, a, how, how do you have a sense of uh, a purpose? How do you pursue purpose? By creating excellence. So excellence is a, is a very important issue for me. And, this, and of course, it lives with me ever since my 14 years old, my first method dean said, don't come to work to work. Come to work to be excellent, to create excellence. I added to it, to me, I always went to work to create excellence and to be with my friends. That means everybody I work with, if they yeah. liked it or not, they're my friends. I want to ask you a question, Horst. I've got these little stickers that I, I, I give speeches to. I tell the audience that I love Mondays. All right. Do you love Mondays? All right. I love every day. <laughs> well, Monday is a great day because you go back to see your friends. You go back to see your friends. But if you feel fulfilled in the work that you're doing, you love Mondays. But how many people do we know that are looking for, you know, to get over hump day or to, you know, thank God it's Friday. And that's not the work environment that our leaders should be creating. Would you agree? But, but that, that's created by leaders who, who make, the, again, I have to come back to it. Forgive me, that's a bit a, a repetition here. 
because they go to work to fulfill a function. Who cares yeah. about it? Who, who goes to work to clean dish in my business, to wash dishes, to make rooms, to check people in, and all that we, that we do? That should not be the reason to go there. That is only a function that takes us to another place. Which, mm -hmm. And that, new, that place is the vision of the organization. And if I don't connect my, all my employees to that vision, we're not going to get there, number one. And number two, I am treating them like a machine, like a chair, just that fulfills a function, rather than inviting them to be part of a dream, part of, of creating something. And that creating can only be accomplished, though, if the vision is excellent, then you only can accomplish it with excellence. So what do you tell leaders that are looking to grow a company that has built the brand that Ritz has beyond vision? Um, what are the, some of the other elements that are necessary for a strong culture like you guys created? Well, well of course, they're leaders and they're, they're managers. And they're very, there are many managers who still make their organization successful. But the leader is a moral leader who aligns the employees, aligns the organization toward behind the vision of the, of the organization. That's called alignment. Uh, today, managers and everybody talks about alignment, but it's just a slogan word, alignment. It, alignment is simply if everybody knows, including the last employee knows, what is the objective of the company? What's the motive of that company? How do I benefit from that motive? Everybody knows that. And everybody, every employee knows what is the expectations of our customers. Now, I'm an aligned organization. Leaders make sure that exist. Managers just force things to happen. That doesn't mean they're not successful. Yeah. But frankly, they're not very moral. <laughs> I, I want to go into something that's inside this book, um, service standards. You had 24 service standards. Is that right? That's correct. How did you, what are service standards and how did you use them to reinforce this alignment across, you know, the, the thousands of employees that you had? I, this, this is a key element to run an organization. This is the key question. The, the first of all, how did we, did we develop them? I made a decision when I started Ritz Carlton, later with Capella, I'm going to create the finest brand in the world. That's a decision. That's a dream. That's an objective. That's a vision. Now I had to decide what will it take to make me superior to the competition so that I will be the leader in the world. So we, de we developed 24 points which we knew if we do those 24 things superior to the competition, we will be seen by our customer as superior to the competition. Well, that's how we develop them. Now, how do we implement them? Is we share those thoughts, those four, 24 points. The first day an employee comes to work, we first tell the employee our belief system, who we are, what's our dream, what's our thinking, What's our soul as an organization? Inviting them to join, and then we teach those 24 points. Because they're so essential. They should be taught the first day at work. Then, we, in order to sustain those 24 points, every day we will repeat one of those points to every employee before every shift. Mind you, we're 24 hour business. We, we, we don't have a key to the hotel, it's over <laughs> 24 hours. Every shift, you cannot go to work, not in the corporate office either, without hearing one of those 24 points from the day. Today, it may be point number 11, which is shared in every hotel, to every department, to every employees before they go to work. Point number, number 11 says, if you get a complaint, you own it and you empower it to take care and make sure that this customer who is complaining is going to be loyal after you finish with it. 
that's being taught today again, that's being explained today. That means if you're the waiter and the guest complains about his TV changer not working, you own the, the TV changer. And you can say, please forgive me, sir. I will, I will buy you breakfast. That's empowerment. You see, the empowerment goes with it. There's another buzzword out there, empowerment, and nobody yeah. knows really what it is. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I wanted to ask you those things because I think a lot of companies struggle with having values, but not aligning the behaviors. And these service standards really are the behaviors That's that right. we live through the brand. That's right. um, I, I want to wrap this up with one thing, Horst. You know, you talked about leadership. What do you? What is the key message that you think our leaders today need to really grasp the most that they seem to be missing? Well, clearly, we touched on that very strongly here. Clearly, have a clearly defined vision. Not mission. People misunderstand vision and mission and mess it up all the time. Vision is not where you are. Mission is what you do today. Vision is where it will take you. Who are you in 10 years from now? Who, what is your organization? And once you establish a clear desire what a company will be, then you have to question yourself. And that's the key. Is this dream, is this objective? good for all concerned. The investor, clearly. <laughs> the customer, clearly. The employee and society. Once it is totally clear that it is good for all concerned, now you, the leader, have no more moral right to compromise it for yourself nor for anyone else because you have determined unquestionably the objective of the company is good for all concerned. From there on, that's where you lead to. That's where you take the people to because you, you now cannot make compromises, not for yourself, because you would go against all others, nor for anyone else, nor for any situation. You're not compromising. You move forward for all concerned. Well, Horst, I really appreciate you being here on the podcast, Leaders in the Trenches. Um, I enjoy sharing, you know, some insights from this book. I really feel like uh, you've nailed something here and I appreciate you being here on the show. And sure did. Awesome. This is such a great interview. I love talking to people that have been there before, been in the trenches, growing mega brands to talk about something that you need to understand. I never know where these things go, but, you know, someone uh, once told me that vision was important. And I've heard it over and over. You've probably heard it over and over. But you heard it again today from Horst talking about how important vision is. Vision is something that aligns the people together. And you must have that. And you must reinforce it every day. You must create the, the service standards is what Ritz Carlson does. I create behaviors. You must have people that understand the customer expectations. And you must be the leader that can engage those people to think in new ways because that's your job. Now, hopefully you enjoy these interviews. Hopefully you're sharing them with someone that you think could benefit, but I enjoy bringing them to you. If I can do anything for you in what you are doing and growing your company, make sure you reach out. I study the fastest growing company, the top 1%, the Inc. 5000 of growth, and they are growing so fast. It's, it's astronomical. But why I study them is because I want to help you grow your company. So if you have any questions about growth, and your leadership and the culture to align that. Make sure you reach out. My name is Gene Hammett, and I'll talk to you soon. As always, lead with courage.